He is the top-ranked and longest-serving senator, retiring at the end of this term, his eighth. He's got a new book out. It is called The Road Taken, a memoir, Senator. I want to thank you for joining us. And, of course, I also want to thank you for your service. Um, I do want to start with this news today on uh, forgiveness, uh, student debt forgiveness, and whether you think it's a good idea. Well, one, I worry about uh, student debt. I, you know, when I was in college and law school, I, I had uh, student loans, but the cost of college, the cost of graduate school is far less than it is today. I think a lot of the uh, tuition costs have gotten out of, out of control. Uh, they've become far too expensive. It's discouraging a lot of young people from going to college. And once they get out, not being able to do the jobs that they're best suited for, only to find jobs where they can pay back their debt, that, that's a spiraling thing that we have to get under control. Uh, I'll wait to hear exactly what the president proposes, but at least in the preliminary uh, suggestions, there'd be a limit on the amount, and it would be available only to people within a certain income level, and I think that, that makes sense. But I, I think the higher education itself is going to look itself in the mirror and say, uh, how do we get these costs under control? I know at the well, University well, of Vermont, our... They've, they've kept the, the tuition the same for years. Well, the question I would ask is, is twofold. One is, what do you do? I mean, to the extent that there's going to be some forgiveness uh, of, of the debt, if, if in fact that's what happens, what does that do uh, towards these spiraling costs? Does it only incent schools to actually increase those costs? You said they have to look themselves in the mirror. How much does the uh, government and, and, and taxpayers need to look at themselves in the mirror to figure out a new path forward in terms of incenting schools to lower those costs rather than increase them? No, that's a question I keep asking myself, and I've asked uh, people in higher education. I said, they've got to get the spiraling cost out. Uh, we, we are seeing less young people willing to go on and get the higher education they need and that the country needs to have people who can handle the uh, kind of jobs that we really need to fill. And uh, it, uh, it would be a terrible mistake for higher education to think, oh, we can just raise uh, tuition costs and all because the government will right. take care of that. that that's not going to happen. I, I suspect this is a one-time thing. And uh, higher education, you asked the perfect question. Higher education has got to look itself in the eye. Senator, what do you tell the viewer, the taxpayer, who says, you know what, loan forgiveness is not really forgiveness. Loan forgiveness is a transfer. It, it's effectively a transfer of the cost uh, from, from one taxpayer to another, oftentimes a taxpayer, uh, potentially who could afford it, maybe, uh, but a taxpayer potentially who paid uh, their college bills in some cases took on uh, one, two, and three jobs. Their families did this uh, to get them through college. And they look at this and they say, this is just unfair. No, you're going to hear a lot of that. But I think one of the things you do is you, you cap uh, the amount, one of the forgiveness, but also of the income bracket where it can be forgiven. And a blanket forgiveness uh, would, not, would not work. Um, I do want to ask you about your book, but I also want to ask you about your career and where you see Washington in this country right now. Um, it <clears throat> seems as divided as ever. Uh, there are some people uh, who think that our democracy is uh, in doubt. There are others who think it's as strong as ever. What do you think? It, it is not as strong as ever. It's one of the reasons I wrote that book. I, I want to show the arc of when I came in time of Watergate, seeing uh, leading Republicans, as much as it pained them to do it, to go down to the White House and tell President Nixon he had to leave because of the things he'd done. And now uh, people of the president's party, former president's party, afraid uh, to, to question him. On top of that, you see people who, wherever they get their information, they believe some things are totally false, demonstrably false, 
but they act on that. We saw that on January 6th in the insurrection. The people coming in and saying, well, the Constitution allows this, the Constitution allows that. One, I doubt they've ever, ever read the Constitution, but secondly, it did not allow what they were doing. And the rest of the world looked at us and wondered if our democracy, the oldest existing democracy, was coming unraveled. Uh, I write the book more to say, here's the way it was. It was not perfect, but it was a lot better. Here's what we've descended to. And the Senate has a duty to come together, Republicans and Democrats, to go back to being the conscience of the nation. Not a perfect conscience, but a lot better than it is today, and set an example. Uh, I, I really am worried about the future of this country.